What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. There's a couple things I do want to mention before we get started with the video. First off, the reason I'm using an avatar is because I am now starting to work from home and my desk looks a little crazy. Now, second off, the reason I am doing this in the patch notes from the website is because they didn't live stream to the YouTube, so I wasn't notified and I don't even think they said anything on Twitter. So, don't know why I said it like that. So we're just going to do this. We're going to go briefly. I don't want to cover a lot because there is a lot coming into season nine of Smite. But as you guys can see here, the skins are looking amazing. They have Poseidon, Nike, Daji. This is going to be a reskin for the battle pass. You get Thanatos. I don't really like it. His hands look way too big for him. But nevertheless, it still looks pretty amazing. So does this Poseidon one. Can't wait to see that one in game. Then we have Rama, Charybdis, Cuckoo, Loki, Don Zaboro, Geb, Atlas is getting his first skin, and Apollo is getting a reskin. Now, moving down, I am not going to go over all of this. You guys should already see this all in game when it goes live. But to let you guys know, we have a new game mode called Slash. Of course, Slash is going to be the combination of siege and clash which they mentioned right here that they will be taking it out off of the public queue um but you could still play it with your friends in a private if you that's something you guys want to do or when pts goes live you guys can make siege and clash private matches but i don't see why anybody will be doing that anytime soon just because of the new slash you guys can see the map it has the siege jungle but the clash lanes which is going to be really amazing i don't know if this is going to be three phoenixes so tower tower phoenix titan i think i'm pretty sure they have the thing this is a lot of information so if you guys do want to go check this out i'm not going to go over all this because then it's going to be a really long video but if you guys do then go into the smite website you guys can find it at smite smitegame.com and just hit search up the news and it should be there. As you can see, it's a lot of different information. So moving into Conquest, they have a lot of information. I don't know if I should cover all this. This is a lot of changes, to be honest. But nevertheless, we have gameplay changes, obelisk changes, jungle buff. They have different things. New NPC, Naga. They will be spawning in a place of previous lesser scorpions. So, and then we have Scorpions and Greater and Lesser. The Draugr will turn to Abyssal Depths once it came. And his buff has been removed. So, no more Draugr. Nothing before the Pyromancer. None of that. And then we have the balance changes to some of these, as you guys can see. Arena's getting a Roman thing. Now, we're going into items, which is the really, really big thing in this new season starting off with you still get a relic at level one you get your first relic for free and you get your second relic for free at level 12 but now relics are getting a tier three now instead of costing 500 gold for a upgrade on your relics you have a tier two relic and it's tier three which is the tier two costs 300 gold and a tier three costs 500 gold so in total you will be spending around 1600 gold to upgrade your relics all right, ages, we have cooldowns are decreased by 10 seconds on both tier 1 and tier 2, but then we have ages of acceleration and ages of judgment. Short, short story, they both heal you. You don't take damage, but the ages of acceleration gives you way more movement speed and it stacks up to 21% over 4 seconds, and the um, ages of judgment takes the damage of your that you are taking and once Aegis is done it releases it back as a burst of magical damage so moving on from that as you guys can see belt of frenzy is getting a increase in damage and in both decrease the duration or increase the duration from one by one second greater belt of frenzy is decreasing the duration by two seconds the cooldown is also going down while the tier one is going up now, this is where it actually gets good because we have Belt of Berserker and Belt of Insatiable Hunger. 
they both work pretty much the same way. Belt of Berserker gives way more damage and attack speed over six seconds, but it decays in strength and attack speed over those six seconds every half a second. But that's still a lot. The only other one is that I would highly recommend better to get the Belt of Insatiable Hunger because in a group fight, this relic will be amazing. Only because, yes, it's half the buff of Berserker, but if you guys are in a team fight and your whole team is going off, then this has a passive where it refreshes and starts over again. So you'll have that 15% attack increase and 25% attack speed buff even longer than just the um, 10 seconds. Moving on to Blink, nothing really there. They took off the mitigation off the tier two. And then we have Corrupted and Scorching Blink, which has Corrupted as actually out here. It's going to blink and then burst a slow buff on enemies um, in a 25 unit radius as the scorching it's going to work somewhat as an agni dash where it actually deals true damage so this is actually going to be super aggressive or you could be corrupted and have it for more of a escape slash blink on and slow uh, i don't know if you get the slow before or after you blink we'll have to find that out in game moving on to bracer we have bracer of Brilliance and Bracer of Illumination. They both work as Sentry Wards. Um, Brilliance gives movement speed and increased power. And Illumination is half of that. But also, it seems like it says, Access Energy on Use to Light Spirit appears patrolling back and forth, revealing enemies along the way. So I guess you could put this somewhat in the jungle lane so you could see if the jungler is coming back and forth. Really good. I could see a lot of people using that. Then we have Meditation Cloak. Name is now changed to Cloak of Meditation. Base Restore Health from 8 to 12. Missing Health Scaling from 5% to 6%. and it, But increase the cooldown. So really good. I feel like they're trying to bring Meditation back because people are just going uh, shell. But reduce the cooldown duration effect. Same stats increase. Cooldown decrease by 10 seconds. And then we have Cloak of Ascentic and Cloak of the Avatar. Having the 35 unit restore 40 plus 7% of the missing health and mana each tick. Heals occur every second for 4 seconds. Each pulse reduces cooldowns for all abilities by 1.5. So if you want to do that, you could get cooldowns. If health, mana, and cooldowns. So, or Cloak of the Avatar, which... Healing occurs every four seconds. Also gain protective barrier when that explodes on enemy comes within 15 units, knocking them back. So Cloak of the Avatar is more or less of a Heimdall horn. If they get too close, they would just be knocked back, which is good if you're trying to get away. So if you want to be a little aggressive, you go Cloak of Ascentic. If you want to be a little more passive and if you're playing solo, you could always go Cloak of the Avatar. Moving on to Cursed Unk, shield damage is increased by 25%. Uh, add a 10% increased damage taken debuff when healed by god abilities. And then shield damage increased, of course, decrease the damage taken debuff by 20% to 10% and decrease the cooldown by 20 seconds. And then we got Drowned and Blighted. Oh, this is a lot. Both of them are doing a lot of different things here. 55 units, 60% for 10 seconds and removes 75% of the enemy currently applied shield. So this is really good if you have somewhat of a geb or if they're using that shell. Enemies that are healed by a god abilities while affected by the curse on take 20% more damage from all sources duration of the curse. All healing reduced by this effect is instead distributed to your allies and 40 unit radius around you. This is like the anti-heal relic from now on. Um, then we have 40% for 10 seconds removed, 75% is the same. While effect curse, magma, 
beneath them it persists for six seconds Miasma deals two percent of the enemy's current health every 0.5 seconds while enemies are inside it refreshes the on debuff effect so this is more of a active so once you pop it and they get affected it's going to tracks follow them for about six seconds so then we have heavenly wings cooldown is increased increased by 10 seconds tier 2 is decreased by 10 seconds removed haste effects and then we have entangled wings or hastened wings which has allied gods within 55 units by 20 percent for five and making you immune to slows on use this rather also roots enemies around you for one second so you could either use this if you're right on top of them so you can catch up so it gives you the root so you'll definitely catch up or you could use this as an escape if they're right on top of you you pop this and you could just get away because they're going to be rooted for a second you have the movement speed and you're gone we got haste and wings which is 20 percent for four seconds making them immune to slows granted haste causing them to be immune to basic attack movement penalties for the duration so successful basic attacks increase for the duration by one second up to four seconds this is going to be good for attack speed adc builds as i would use this on a crit build with attack speed just because no attack speed penalties we got horrific emblem increase attack speed debuff from 15 percent to 25 percent that's gonna be crazy added a 15 percent decrease damage dealt debuff so solo lane this is going to be an amazing first item and but increase the cooldowns from by 20 seconds nothing on tier two and then we have emblems of trembling terror and increasing peril slows the movement speed of everybody and 75 units by 30 percent 30 percent is a lot for five seconds their attack speed by 25 percent additionally, additionally their damage dealt is reduced by 15 percent this is amazing for soloing if an enemy deals 10 percent of the allied god's maximum health in this time the debuff is increased by 10 percent each stack up to three times holy crap um then we have the other one which is pretty much the same da, 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 da. damage does reduce by 50 percent if an enemy is dealt 30 percent of their maximum health during this duration they are trembled by for 1.5 seconds which i don't see what that could be um but moving on we have shell increase the damage reduction by five percent decrease the cooldown by 20 seconds and then we have fortifying shell or phantom shell did they take out phantom uh health 100 health 12 per god level uh, additionally all others uh, take 50 percent reduction attack from basic attacks when the when the shield is broken and expires allies gain a new buff provided 25 damage mitigation wow that's amazing then we have same thing four seconds 50 percent using this item will allows you and allies to go through players and player made objects so yeah this is kind of like the phantom shell not bad increase the cooldown here increase the cooldown here and then we have chaotic beads and temporal beads using this control immune for two seconds any cc effect of that cleanse during this time including an activation sends a homing projectile to enemies who's applied it dealing seven percent of their maximum health wow that's actually a good counter be relic so you beads their cc and you can do seven percent of their maximum health not bad we have using this item removes crowd confront and makes you immune for two seconds reduces actives cooldowns by three se three seconds so almost everybody always gets beads so having to choose between the chaotic beads and the temp temporal beads for the extra cooldowns by three seconds is going to be a very hard decision to make but moving on on to the shield of thorns decrease reflect damage by th from 30 percent to 25 percent added 25 percent lifesteal debuff for enemies attacking you and then the cooldown is increased by 20 seconds decrease reflect damage by five same thing and then enemies attacking you from 50 percent to 25 percent and then we have thorns of overgrowth 
Using this item reflects 25% of all damage before mitigation for the next five seconds back to the owner of magical damage. If you are dealt 120 your level damage while effect is active, the effect will end early while this is active. Enemies can only life steal from you 50% of their total life steal. Additionally, you gain 5% movement speed and attack speed for each god within 20 units. Not bad. Don't really know how that's going to work in game, to be honest. Um, but then we have Sapping Strength. Back to its owner, Magical Damage, 25, 75% Life Seal. So this is the more Life Seal train, so they have less. And each basic attack from the enemy god reduces cooldown by this item. 5.5 seconds, and the decrease the cooldown from 120 to 80? That's already getting lowered. Wow, so you're going to have this up a lot. So pick. It's going to be good. I feel like Sap and Strength is going to be the popular choice, but... Don't quote me on that just because people have opinions. Moving on to Sundering Spear. Shield damage increased from 50% to 75%. Increased the cooldown by 5 seconds. And then current health damage reduced from 12.5% to 7.5%. Increased damage taken debuff decreased from 7% to 5%. But decreasing the cooldown. So then we have Sundering Blast and Sundering Siphon. Fireball reveals some vault that travels 70 units, stopping at the first god hit, splashing at 20 unit radius, dealing 15% of their current health and true damage, reducing their active shield by 75. So this is actually pretty good if you're fighting a lot of gods that use shields and stuff, just to get knock that shield off a little early and do a little bit of damage. Target hit takes 5% increased damage for 5 seconds, stacking 2 times. This relic has two charges, so if you use this twice, you can really do a lot. Fireball that travels 50 units, so this is a shorter distance, 75% of linking them to you. In the next four seconds, they will be dealt 5% of your current health as true damage every second, and you will receive half of that amount in, as healing. So I feel like this is pretty good, especially in a one-on-one -on -one scenario. If you can get that, that hit off, it's basically just one-sided. Uh, two charges and a second hand the same target will just refresh the duration. We have teleport, not much on tier 1, tier 2, just to decrease the, the cooldown. Then we have heroic teleport or persistent teleport. Using this item allows you to teleport to an allied structure or ward while rooted in place. This effect is not interrupted by damage, but is interrupted by crowd control. After teleporting, you gain a slow immunity, 20% movement speed, and 40 protection for 10 seconds. Cooldown decrease from 160 to 130. So they're trying to make this so that when you're in lane, you can actually teleport to your allies lane or wards and try to get a gank. If you guys have like sentry wards in the jungle close to a lane, that's also good. But then we have persistent teleport. Using this item will allow you to teleport to allied structures or ward while rooted in place. This effect cannot be under while crawl. Kills assist and enemy gods reduce to cooldown. Wow. Cooldown decreased by 90 seconds. Wow. So this in general, so just even if you're not using it, I feel like you'll still get the cooldown. So you'll be able to use your teleport a lot more often. Now we have glyph items, which is something new as well on the top of the relics. Now they're not a lot of them. Right now we're starting off with... um. Heart Ward Amulet, it's getting an Amulet of Silence or an Amulet of Stronghold, which is gaining a stack each time an enemy within 40 units casts an ability. At 5 stacks, the next basic attack against an enemy god will silence them for 1.5 seconds. This occurs every 45 seconds. Good if you're building a support trying to help out your ADC. Or Stronghold, where 20% of your physical protections are converted into magical protections. So I'm not sure if this works like heart word where it's like everybody around you, but 20% of physical protection converted into more magical protection. That's actually really good. Moving on, we have Breastplate of Valor getting a glyph upgrade. Um, we got Breastplate of Determination and Breastplate of Vigilance. Each time you hit an enemy, you get hit by an ability, you gain a stack of five protection that 
corresponds to the damage type you were hit. Max up to four. When you reach the stacks both kinds, you gain a burst of 20% movement speed and a double of protection gained by this effect every eight seconds after the stack is removed. So you're going to see a lot of solo laners and supports build this, especially because this already comes with 20% cooldown reduction. So hopefully with the upgrade, it still has that. And then we have when your your ultimate ability has finished casting, you provide an aura of 40 units range around you, reducing basic attack damage from enemies by 30% for 5 seconds. This, personally, I love playing Athena. So, Breastplate of Vigilance is going to be my number one item, especially because it's always a ultimate ability. So, 40 units, you land on your, um, your teammate. And you guys are already taking 30% less damage. So, and she's already giving that mitigation with her ult. But moving on to Deathbringer, we have Envenomed and Malicious. Envenom is critical hits on enemies afflict a poison for two seconds. The poison slows them by 10% and reduces their damage output by 15. No, Poison Star has been removed from the game. So, now we don't have a version of that. Poison Star, this is the new Poison Star crit item malicious deathbringer upgrade from deathbringer the socially hitting an enemy god with a crit will subtract one second from all your abilities currently on cooldown except for your ultimate malice has been removed from the game so as you guys can see they did it into a relic just because deathbringer is almost a must if you're going crit because of that 40 percent critical chance so and critical damage i think it's either critical chance or critical damage i don't remember um, I think it's in the patch notes later on. Then we have Jotun's Veracity and Jotun's Vigor. Your next basic attack makes an marks an enemy god. If you hit the marked enemy or the marked enemy god hits you with a basic attack or ability, gain one stack. Each stack provides 2% increased damage towards the marked enemy, stacking up to 10 times. This effect can only occur every 60 seconds. Amazing if you're going to keep jungling. If you drop below 40% health, gain 10% movement speed and 40% physical ability lifesteal for 5 seconds. This effect may occur once every 15 seconds. This is going to be the number one jungle sustain on top of whatever jungle build we have. Moving on to, what is this? Upgrade of Rada to Hootie is now also getting a... Glyph upgrade successfully hitting an enemy god with an ability cools down calls down a meteor lands after 1.5 seconds dealing 130 percent of the magical power 100 plus 30 percent of your magical power damage in a 15 unit radius. This effect can only occur once every 90 seconds. Or the nimble Rada Tahuri for every 40 magical protect magical power you have you gain two percent attack speed. This is going to be also a god-specific item, so more of a um, Kronos, Poseidon, Oleron. So gods like that are going to be having a lot more attack speed without having to build into that. So this is also going to be a great choice. So we have some regular item changes, decrease the physical power, decrease the magical power, from 15 to 10 and 20 to 15. Uh, decrease the cost from 800 to 700. Um, just regular stuff. Increase protections. Um, this also got a buff. This got buff. Increased physical power from 15 to 70. Started decrease cost from 700 to 650. Not bad. Now we have Mystical Mail. Decrease the damage aura from 30. Plus 1 per level magic damage per second to 25 so that's got nerfed decrease the shield from 125 percent of your protection from the item to 100 percent uh bulwark decrease the health shield from 15 percent of your magic maximum health to 12 percent and then we have decreased magical power by 10 for hellkind's ring void stone is getting a buff 100 health and five percent protection aura or d Protection debuff aura is increased by 5%, so almost a must now. I wouldn't say a must now, but 
I would say this is going to be really helpful later on in the game. Increased health and tower attack speed buff by 10%. We have 200 to 250 and physical power aura debuff from 25 to 30. This is going to annoyingly buff any magical gods in the solo lane. But now we have Blackthorn Hammer. Now builds off of Heavy Hammer Tree. Costs 220, 35, 25 protection of both, and 300 health. I wonder if it still has its passive, though. It has no mention of it. Ruin Forge Hammer is 2400, 45 physical power, 250 health, and then HP5 and MP5. Again, don't know about the passive, might have stayed the same. Bohemian Line increased physical protection by 10 and decreased the time of the block stacks by 5 seconds. Really good. No one really used it, but we'll see how it does in Season 9. Increased physical protection from 35 to 45, so increased by 10. Big difference. Don't let it fool you. Increased the power by 10. The duration of the passive by 2 seconds. Uh, Legion of Helm increased magical power by 20. And physical protection is decreased by 10. Uh, Warlock Staff increased magical power by 10. 10 is a big difference. Don't let it fool you. Increased magical power from 70 to 80. Already good item. Even better now. Uh, decreased the cost. And increase the magical power. Almost nobody built Obsidian Shard, which actually surprises me. But moving on to Rage is getting a 5 damage increase. Fail Knot is getting a cost decrease. Now the regular Deathbringer is increased power by 5. Increase the crit chance by 5%. And decreasing the cost by 100 gold just because it's getting new relics. This is going to be amazing. We're going to see a lot more. Crit builds, then we have Shadow Steel Shuriken, increase the attack speed by 5%, and increase the duration of the heal by 4%, I mean 4 seconds. Ballast has been removed, Poison Star has been removed, Atalanta's Bow has 40 power, 25% attack speed, 20% crit chance now, that's surprising, and 10% lifesteal, the passive is unchanged, you still get that movement speed, and it costs 2350. Silver Branch increased the cost by 200 and the percentage of physical penetration, holy crap, I can't talk, <laughs> is increased by 10%. So counteracting the increased thing, which is really good. Decrease the stacks from 70 to 50, so you'll have this maxed out earlier. And then increasing the power per stack by 0.2. Actually a big difference. I'm actually liking this, so this is a buff. Increase the max stacks from 2 to 3. Increase max healing reduction. This item can provide by 40% to 60. Wow. Hydras is getting a gold increase, but it is adding 10% physical penetration. I love that. Increase physical power from 30 to 35. Attack speed from 15 to 20. Great for Baka. Soul Eater physical power is increased by 5. Not so, not so amazing. Physical power from 5 to 30, 40. 35 to 40 and a little... Ability lifesteal by 5%. It's okay. Decreased the cost by 50 gold and added a 5% movement speed. Gotta love that. And then we have God changes. Atlas is getting a lot of different changes, as you guys can see right here. Increased movement speed from... Increased it by 5. Increased health and increased health per level. Uh, Decreased the size of the passive meter UI art. Increase the base damage, increase the slow of his one. Gravity Coalesce is now ba knockback immune while firing this ability. This ability now damages minions that it passes through. The ability is now a base slow of 25% applied to God's hit, even if the slow were cleansed. Decrease the stack of the slow by 3 to 2. Not bad. So we'll see how that goes. Camelzots is getting a buff, decrease. No, it's getting a nerf. Decrease the self heal from 8. To 40 from 8 to 32. Ooh, and then increase the cooldown of nine by 10 seconds. Decrease the base damage. It's three times. Okay. Soul is getting a decreased passive heat regeneration from 40, 50 thing. I don't know if that's a buff or a nerf. Mm, you guys let me know. Increase the cooldown of by one second, but decrease the movement speed. 
best at decrease the physical power scaling of 25% to 5% per tick. Added additional audio cues of pre filed ability of clarity. Increased the cooldown by. Oh, now it, the cooldown starts at 110 and goes down. Okay, so they felt it was really strong with 90 seconds at early game. Uh, increased the cooldown and increased the cooldown of both his abilities by about a second each rank. So Nike is getting a nerf on her shield. Geb is getting a nerf on his shield duration and scaling. Arachne's cooldown is getting buffed. She's getting a 2%, two second cooldown. Um, Amaterasu is getting a buff. Uncharged damage. It's better scaling into late game. Fully charged damage is also getting better scaling into late game. Uh, German Gunder was pretty slow. He's getting a Base movement speed increase, uh, decrease self slow from twenty percent to fifteen percent, and damage taken by ten percent to five five percent. Crap! Holy, I can't talk. <laughs> um, increase slow by five and increase. Okay, so he's getting somewhat buffed. Tier increase base damage on Lawbringer by fifty, almost fifty at all ranks. No. 50, 75, 100, 125, and then 250. Wow. Late game is strong. Um, Baba Yaga is increased damage from 85 to 225 to 95 to 235. So she's getting a buff here. Uh, remove self root on fire. Reduce pre-fire time 0.5 to 0.2. Huge buff for her. Direct hits now apply a root and cripple instead of just a root. Really good. That's a buff. Um, increase base damage buff. Speed up the travel time initial hit. Increase range 5 to 2. Okay, so. Got Kronos and Horus. Updraft damage scaling is increased. And gust damage is also increased. Cleave damage is increased into late game. Decrease the time per tick for 2M to 1.5M and buff to 125 at 35.5. Small little buff there, but uh, increase minion damage and update the screen. Make sure the minion is clearly labeled as minion only damage. Okay. He has increased aura radius by 40 to 55. Decrease the mana cost of her gust. Um, early into late game. So that's really good. And then lastly, we have increased base damage of her spirit ball into late game by 20 per 20 damage. Not bad. So that was just the quick patch notes. Um, if you guys want to comment down below, if you guys want me to go over the conquest changes, because that was a lot of different changes and deserves its own video. But you guys let me know, and if you guys are upset that I didn't go over it in this video, also let me know. I love the comments. I love to reply. And if there's anything else, um, I will be playing some Season 9. Can't wait to see you guys on the background. And if you guys did enjoy the video, please leave a like, comment. And if you guys want to see more, just subscribe. I will be live streaming in the future. But without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next Smite video.